Just quickly before we get into this review, I know how much you appreciate a good art book, so I am very excited to let you know that my new book, Rockabilly Psycho Billy, an art anthology, is now available for pre-order. The book features over 600 artworks from 55 of my favorite artists on the themes of Rockabilly and Psycho Billy. You can pre-order it at pretty much all major booksellers worldwide, but I'll also link a list below in case you're having trouble finding it. But if it looks like the sort of thing that you or someone you know may enjoy, definitely consider pre-ordering as that really helps the success of the book and goes a long way to making sure I can do more in the future. This is a review of Suicide Squad, behind the scenes with the worst heroes ever. And I think the best way to describe this book is all style, no substance. And though that's usually a disparaging term, this is actually my favorite superhero movie related book, as it is very unique and entertaining. So I guess just to start, we'll get the negatives and limitations of the book out of the way. So you'll notice the title of this book is not the art or making of Suicide Squad, and I think that's really, really good because the fact is, there is not enough art in here to call it an art book, nor is there enough making of behind the scenes information to call it a, a making of book. And even though that's probably the expectation everybody has coming to this book, I like that it doesn't use those terms like some other books that, that then give you something of an unrealistic expectation about what the contents will be like. So what I mean when I say this book doesn't really have any substance is, first of all, like I said, there's really not a whole ton of art in here compared to what you would expect from a, a typical art book. Uh, and likewise, the text is not a um, in-depth, informative read about the production and creation of this movie at all. The majority of the text really does read like a promotional piece. Lots of discussing the characters and story that you would already know from having watched the movie. Tons and tons of patting the cast and crew on the back and telling you how amazing they are. So it really reads like a long, poorly written magazine article written by a sort of sycophant journalist who is more interested in hyping the movie rather than giving any sort of detailed account of how the movie was made. And so you'll sort of just be reading paragraph after paragraph of fluff, um, and then, but you will hit upon quotes from the cast and crew that are genuinely uh, insightful little tidbits. Never enough to make you feel satisfied, but enough to keep you going anyway. But the thing that will keep you really engaged and turning the page is this book's sense of fun and novelty that is very unique and entertaining. Um, the book has a ton of sort of like removable uh, paper documents and things like that. Some of them are completely useless, like the postcards and things like that that just feature stills from the movie. And then there are some that are a little more interesting, like the, there's a set of um, rub-on tattoos of like the Joker's tattoos and maybe Harley Quinn and some for El Diablo. But the best ones are definitely the uh, replicas of certain documents, like one of the letters that Deadshot's daughter writes to him, or Amanda Waller's files. Those are really cool. And I just love that sort of thing because there's just such a, a sort of very simple uh, enjoyment and to be got out of that. Um, I know there's a Kindle version of this book, which I find horrifying because you would be just missing out on so much of what makes this book great. And though there have been other superhero books with these sort of like little interactive, removable elements like the Dark Knight manual that was sort of meant to be more of an in-universe kind of book whereas I've never really seen that done with a, a kind of um, behind the scenes book in quite this way and I was actually surprised how well it worked in this instance but even more than those interactive elements the thing that I liked most about this book is its overall style. The presentation and graphic design is impeccable. Most art and making of books tend to sort of just be, you know, you just like uh, slap the text and images onto a page and just keep it very plain and straightforward and that's more than fine. But then it is very sort of exciting and gratifying to see a book that sort of goes the extra mile and to create something with a real strong visual appeal and style. The book uses a sort of uh, scrapbook style which which is always my favorite style of book layout. And it's just implemented so well and appropriate for a movie like this. The graphic design uses a lot of sort of street art and urban elements. So of course, even though no amount of style can make up for a lack of substance, I think that when you compare 
the content of this book to say any other art and making of book for a superhero movie with the exception of maybe the making of the dark knight trilogy most of them are also not very good on that front so this suicide squad book isn't actually that far behind in that sense but stylistically it is just way ahead of any other superhero book i've seen so for example if you look at the art books for the marvel movies individually they're fine they're great art books but the problem is, kind of like the Marvel movies themselves, is they're all very, very similar. They're all very plain, very vanilla, and don't really vary beyond this sort of uh, cookie cutter style. And that's a real shame because, say, uh, Thor Ragnarok, which was my favorite uh, Marvel movie to date, because the movie was quite tonally and visually different. But I was really disappointed by the art book because, except for a sort of really cool table of contents. The actual inside of the book, the art and everything, the layout, all that, was pretty much exactly the same as all the other Marvel art books. It just looked like a blend between the Thor 2 and Guardians of the Galaxy art book, and didn't do anything to make it feel unique. And I know it sounds like I'm picking on Marvel here, but the exact same thing is true of um, the Man of Steel, uh, Justice League art books, Batman vs Superman. They all suffer from a real sameness that this Suicide Squad book was really able to break away from which I think is great and very very smart because it is so in keeping with the identity of the movie because I think one of the reasons that people were so um, hyped for Suicide Squad before it came out was because it looked visually and tonally very different to uh, any other superhero movie you know by using a lot of color a lot of these sort of like um neon almost sickly colors the pinks the purples the greens although interestingly a lot of this was probably sort of artificially injected into the movie after the fact because and they never talk about this in the book because it's too much of a, a marketing tool designed to sort of promote the movie but Suicide Squad was originally meant to be a lot darker but after Batman vs Superman came out and was sort of uh, slammed for not being fun enough. Warner Brothers really tried to push marketing Suicide Squad as a much more um, fun movie, but because most of the movie had already been filmed, they had to sort of do that in ways like editing or licensing a lot of catchy tunes and adding a lot more color to the marketing campaign for the movie. In fact, take a look at this. So this shows the evolution of the Suicide Squad logo from each of the trailers, and so you can really see how they've tried to incorporate a lot of color to market this movie as being very visually appealing and fun. And so of course we would want this book to have a lot more substance and be a really great read as well as being visually appealing. And like I said, no amount of style can account for a lack of substance. However, I did genuinely find this book to be a fun and entertaining read, which is why if you take into account these limitations and adjust your expectations accordingly, and if you're a fan of the movie or the DC Universe in general, and you like what you see, then I think you might too.